Thanks for tuning in to our first episode of the 2022 fall season of No Wine in No Time. I'm your host, Dave, and when this wine came into my store, I absolutely had to do a video on it. What kind of wine is it? Well, it's a white wine by the name of Muscatel. So before you turn this video off and go, Muscatel, I don't want that wine, let's talk a little bit about what it is, what its tradition is, what has turned people off, and what it is today. So, Muscatel is a wine grape that in Spain and Portugal goes by that name. But you might know it by the more common name in Italy called Moscato, or if we jump over to France, Muscat. So, this is a Moscato grape grown in Spain. This is from Malaga, Spain. Now, why is it that it has such a shady reputation? Well, in post-prohibition United States, the market was flooded with Muscatel wines. Now, Muscatel at that time was a fortified sweet wine. So what exactly is a fortified sweet wine? Think of something like a port. We take those Muscatel grapes, we ferment them very lightly so there's only a couple of percent alcohol, then we add a neutral grape spirit to kill the yeast, but also raise the alcohol content. So now we have something with a lot of residual sugar, and also a wine that has very high alcohol. So Muscatel had very low quality and it really got the reputation of this was a wino wine. This is a wine that you drank under the train bridge and it was sold in large jugs. So this is not what we're talking about with this type of wine. This is a wine that was fermented to be quite dry and we see a lot of resurgence of winemakers in Spain and Portugal returning back to those beautiful 3,000 year old roots when the Phoenicians first brought Muscat de Alexander from Alexander, Egypt to what is now southern Spain. And they're getting back to those roots and making those dry wines like they traditionally made thousands of years ago. This is that type of wine. So we're talking about Moscato in Muscatel. We're not talking about the traditional under the train bridge wine we're talking about a wine that is aged quite gracefully. So what is this wine? This is made from a producer by the name of Jorge Ordonez, and this is his Botani Old Vines Muscatel. So Old Vines in Spain, this actually has a law and it has a number associated with it. So to put Old Vines on your label, those vines have to be a minimum of 40 years old. And in this offering, if you look at the data sheet, some of them, these go back actually to 1945. So really quite old vines that are used. So what's the deal with old vines? Well, old vines produces less fruit, but more high quality fruit. So exceptional fruit to start with, and then running the fermentation to be quite dry gives us a complex wine. So why Muscatel? Isn't it normally a sweet wine or isn't it a fortified wine? The answer is yes and yes. But if it's driven down to be quite dry, then the Muscatel has a beautiful aromatic quality and a beautiful complexity on the palate. So next time you're in your wine store and you say, well, hey, Dave was talking about Muscatel, I wanna pick one up, how do you identify it? So let's talk about the fortified version. If you find one where you look on the back of the wine label and the alcohol content is approaching 20%, let's say 18, 19, 20, you know that's a fortified wine. Reason being, in a natural fermentation process, no wine could ever have more than 17% alcohol because all yeast dies when alcohol hits 17%. So the only way they can push it past that is to add a neutral grape spirit, spirit or brandy. Also, one thing we don't want it to be is if our alcohol content on the back of the label is very, very low let's say five, six, or seven percent. Now we know this is a naturally fermented sweet wine. So we're looking for the spot that's somewhere in the middle. If we look at the back of the label, it's 13, 14, 15 percent. We know that it's a naturally fermented dry muscatel, which is exactly what we have from Jorge Ordonez. So let's see what happens when it's in your glass. If we take a look at it, the first thing we see that it's crystal clear and a beautiful straw yellow in color. If we swirl to liberate the aromas, first thing we notice is there is a 
ton of aromas coming out of here. Everything from apricot and peach to a little bit of spring flowers and even a slight little ginger stripe on there. So let's pass it by the palate and see what we think. This muscatel from Jorge Ordonez takes your palate on really quite a ride. When it enters the front side of the palate, we're greeted with beautiful stone fruits. Think things like apricots and peaches. Then when it goes kind of mid-palate, we almost get a tart apple or citrus and certainly some lychee type of flavors. And the finish is lingering because this wine was aged for eight months on the lees. Now, lees are dead yeast cells, and that gives it a beautiful creaminess, which hangs around on the back side of the palate. So a gorgeous wine, and certainly one worth seeking out. Now, what would we pair a wine like this with? I like it with lighter meats, so think things like chicken or heavier fishes. But I'll be honest with you, with a wine this complex and this beautiful that's telling your senses so many different things, I just enjoy it with a few friends on the patio on a warm summer evening. So I'm going to get back and enjoy a little bit more of Jorge Ordonez's creation, and I ask that you come back next time, because soon you'll know wine in no time. Mm -hmm.